Welcome back. This is End Time Evangelist. The Lord bless you. I hope you are doing well today. The Lord has been good to you. Okay, today I want us to discuss、um, a very important issue here. It is very, very important, and at the same time, it is a sensitive you know, matter. The Lord has laid this burden on my heart for a long time now because of what is going on in the body of Christ. Here in this Very particular video, I am going to show you some faces of men of God. I am not going to call their names, I am not going to mention their names, but I will put up their pictures as you're watching the video. You see them. Some of these men of God, or、uh, am I even calling them men of God because of what they are doing? You know, when you call ministers men of God or women of God, they should be God like, right? But most of these people, I will show you some of their pictures, they are not behaving like God at all. So, probably I will call them ministers or preachers. Actually, some of them were called. From the inception of their ministry, God called them, anointed them, but in the way they backslided, they decided to do things on their own. And now God is going to use them and dump them. God will use them and dump them if they don't repent. So I believe, or I hope, and pray that. When these videos come across them, they will not be too proud to repent or feel judged. I am not judging anyone. I am not condemning any churches. I am only doing what I know is right as the Holy Spirit of God is leading. Because the church of Jesus Christ is one. I see no reason why the body of God should be divided with false doctrines and You know, teachings that are not aligned with the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bless you because you are holy and righteous. You are a perfect God. There is no one like you. This is another wonderful message, Lord, that you have laid in my heart to teach to the people of the world. I pray that as many, O、oh、Lord, That this message is meant for as many ministers, as many members under the, their ministry who will come across these videos. I pray, Lord, that you will not harden their heart, that you give them the heart of flesh, that they may receive this message and obey this message. At the same time, repent that you may show them mercy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Honestly, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will show you mercy as you watch this video with a humble heart and amend your ways. You know, most of the problems we have today in the Christendom is that everyone builds their own doctrine. They say, This is the doctrine of my own church, that is the doctrine of your own church, whichever way you want to. You know, run your ministry, run your church, that is your own business. And they forget that the church is nobody's business. The church is the business of Jesus Christ because the church is his own. He laid the foundation of the church, the church belongs to him. So I, I feel annoyed and irritated and disappointed when I hear men of God say, This is my church. This is my church. The church doesn't belong to you. You are just a caretaker. You are just a shepherd that the Lord God Almighty had placed over some sheep to monitor them, to feed them. 
But the question is, are you feeding them well? Are you feeding them? Are you feeding them with the right food? Because when you don't feed, you know, heads with the right food, definitely they will not grow. When you don't feed your children with the right food, they will not grow. I'm making this video which I titled So Merchandisers because of the revelation the Lord showed me about some men of God. I had received this message a long time ago, but uh, you know, I was not pushed to do a video about it. And again, I have been very busy, so busy doing the work of God, you know. I do, as I do videos online, I also do offline as well. So I want to make this video because the, the house of God, the souls that Jesus had died for, they are being wasted. They are being deceived. They are not feeding them with the truth. They are not feeding them with the food that will nourish them and prepare them for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I tattoo this so much and us because that is exactly what they are doing. These men of God are doing. So I will allow you to watch these clips. There are some clips I will give you an opportunity to watch. These clips are some videos put up on YouTube about by some preachers who say that um, trousers, women using trousers, is not a sin. And this very particular issue has brought a long-term controversies and argument in the house of God. And I happen to be the first person who made videos about or discover trousers in the Bible. My first YouTube that day, I'm having issue with YouTube. I know they will give me access to that channel maybe later on when the the strike expires or so. If you have come across that video, I was able to describe and explain to you the meaning of trousers and the meaning of breeches. I put up two definitions there and if you if you watched the video the this, this, the, the definition or the description of the, the, the word breeches which also means trouser and the meaning of trouser they are very very similar they are not far from each other in their meanings and I put up some pictures just to explain to you that breeches and trousers they mean the same thing and the Christian women of nowadays my problem with you is that you listen to what your pastors say and your pastors are not always telling you the right thing and it is a disaster it is a disaster because it is very unfortunate that your pastor cannot save you in the end. Your pastors cannot save you in the end. No, they can't. Because your pastors will equally stand before God to face judgment. My former YouTube is still accessible. You can still access the YouTube. So you can go there on Truth is Pure channel. I will put up the channel on the link of this very one. And watch some videos there that will change your life transform your Christian life and put you in, in the faith constantly there are videos there that need people to watch there are people that need to watch those videos and I I, I recommend and you know beseech you all to share the channels my interest is to get people to watch and get to know the truth that's all so in this passage I will allow you to watch these clips I want you to listen to these men, these preachers. Calling them men of God really, you know, is disappointing because even God Himself is disappointed in them, which is why I am making this video. So, calling them men of God is not really, really what I want to do right now. But I, I wish and desire that they repent because I, I'm praying for them. You know, all these men of God that they have grown so big, so large. Their church has grown big. They have thousands and hundreds of thousands of members 
And uh, when they see a message like this hitting at them, I'm not judging them because they are anointed. Anointed preachers. I am not judging them. I am only teaching the message of Jesus Christ. For heaven's sake. When such a message as this comes to them, they, they will not believe it. They say, ah, don't listen to them. I beg those people, they don't know anything. They don't know the Bible. One of them says that even scholars who have gone to Bible theology school, they come back and then they don't understand the, what the Bible is saying in the book of Genesis 22 verse 5. Anyway, I will allow you to watch these videos. But before you watch that video, I want to read something to you. Before you watch that video, I want you to open your Bible in the book of Jeremiah. Watch these clips and I will come back and I will explain to you what those verses are saying. I think I should mention this pastor's name so that there will be, no, be no confusion. This is Pastor Damina, Pastor Ebe Damina. Anyone I mention his name is because I'm late to mention the name. This man is one of the people that are destroying the, the members, the sheep of Jesus Christ. Bible says here, you see, you will see when you watch those clips, I will allow you to watch those clips, then when we come back, we are going to discuss the videos. Jeremiah 12 verse 10 says, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Many preachers have destroyed my sheep. Many pastors are marching over the souls I died for. Many pastors are leading astray the people I shed my blood for. Many pastors have become hiring. They are hired pastors. They are not choosing. And that is why all these things are happening in the house of God. I'm going to put up here three clips of videos I want you to watch. Watch them. There are many, 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 many of them in, in online that are saying the same thing. And it is really heartbreak, heartbreaking. And God is crying over the church. And these people are busy destroying souls and sending them to hell. And the thing that say working for God, no, they are not. So watch the three videos. Then when I come back, let us discuss this issue once and for all. And then those of you that are in those churches, in some churches as that, I want you to run for your life. Because if you remain there, you are going to perish. So please, enjoy these videos. And I will come back in the next part. Then we will discuss the part two of this very video I titled So Merchandisers. God bless you. See you soon. Trousers. That one has no, there is no, I don't even, there, that, that is the simplest of all of them. The simplest of all of them. The simplest of all of them. A woman should not put on, put it on the screen for me, guys. That one, I won't, I will, I will just show you by yourself. You, you don't even need help. Media, put it on the screen. Deuteronomy 22.5. Hallelujah. Let's start from verse 1. You cannot pick a scripture and read it from verse 5. <clears throat> and say that that's what the scripture is saying. So, should a lady wear trousers? Eh? You are wearing trousers. Ah, on my body. You are going to hell. 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 And have, listen to me, please. I have often wondered, often wondered, why it is so convenient when you are just like when I was talking about, you know, the culture of the Corinth. 
for married people and you can quickly pick that one culture and just four chapters after he's giving you another culture but you're not picking that other one the word of god is not a place where you pick what you like and drop what you like if you are if you want to stay with some things you have to stay with it all through you must stay with it all through you have to stay with it all through is somebody getting what i'm trying to say so let's start reading from verse one i want you to see all the things you must obey before you get to verse five and after verse five so let us read together everybody want to go Thou shall not see what? Okay, before, before. Let's really go to verse 5 first. Let's first go to verse 5. Verse 5. Let me help those of you that are... I just want to help you. Those of you that want us not to wait for us. Let's, let's read. Everybody want to say... First of all, everybody, I hope you know that there is no scripture. Please listen. And listen, I want you to listen very carefully there is no scripture in the bible that says a woman shouldn't wear trousers it does not exist the only scripture that has been used is this scripture and he does not say anything about trust that's the first thing why is it that the scripture did not say trousers because in these days they did not have trousers the men wore gown the women wore gown have you seen Jesus? No, have you seen the, the whatever? Did you see him wear trousers? No. Jesus, you've seen, all of you have seen the, the movie Jesus of Nazareth. Did you see Jesus of Nazareth? Was he wearing jeans? I know. Sorry, no, you, well, we didn't see Jesus of Nazareth. What we saw is the one that they acted. I, if you have traveled, you know, one of the things you will notice, maybe you notice that in Qatar, Dubai, all those places, uh, whatever, they don't, you just see those guys. Jalamia and sandals. I was first confused the first time I traveled. You know, in Nigeria, I'm from Iloni. Iloni, when boys wear Jalamia, I don't want to say genie, want to wear. They've... Jalamia is what you just, when you are feeling unserious, you just wear Jalamia, wear uh, bread, more Jalamia. So imagine me. What makes it painful is that an average person does not know the word of God. When people criticize pastors on faith, we see Christian, what the Christian say, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. <laughs> that doesn't work nowadays. Can you build a solid point from the Bible to defend what you are saying? An average Christian cannot. I've told many of you here. You, many of you are like that here now, so you are wearing trousers and ladies. You don't know from the Bible why you think it is right to wear trousers. You are wearing it because you are in nature, they are in nature, they are women wear trousers. So if you call you now and say, sister, you are wearing trousers, you are going to hell. You can't defend yourself scripturally. You only wear because you are in a church where they wear. Should I set you free? <laughs> what about if I'm deceiving you? I rapture apples and God says, all oh, wearing trousers, they are not going. What are you going to do? Because you are wearing it because you are in a church where they wear it. You don't know what will you say to God. If God says, okay, trousers are not allowed in heaven. <laughs> hallelujah see this is how ignorant we are we do things that our churches are doing without having convictions from the bible and that is dangerous so the day your church is missing you miss it along are you following me so all the ladies were interested why are you wearing trousers? no okay some of you are not wearing it right now but well, you're wearing it normally <laughs> why <laughs> what what are your reasons how do you defend yourself See, the scripture they use in Deuteronomy 22. Have you read before? Maybe in three minutes, you just say Deuteronomy 22. That a woman does not wear what a man. Can you give us Deuteronomy 22? Can we digress? Can we go into that a little? Let me just. You know, because I say this a lot, but I'm not to, I should give you. <laughs> Amen. Thou shalt not see. Thank you. The woman shall not wear which pertaineth to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all who do so abomination unto the Lord. When I, you know, the guy that came to argue when I was serving as a copper in Capitol, when he, he said so, I was working in a piece, the guy came and he said, oh, I said, oh, fantastic. So, it, number one, 
all of them who have ever met me, they don't know where that scripture is in the Bible. So I start by helping them out. I said, I said, where is that in the Bible? I said, hey, I know it's in Deromi. So I said, I know it's in I said, let me help you. It's in Deromi 22 from verse 5. I said, hey! The naughty boy should have thought about it that somebody that is helping you to pinpoint the scripture you are looking for will know some other scriptures to defeat you with. Then he opened it. He said, he said look at it, it's there. I said, can we read further? I said the same chapter, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8. When you build a new house, thou shalt make. <laughs> Let's leave that one. Verse 9. And I want to get to one. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Interestingly, that guy was in a Greek when he was in school. I said, Have you practiced mixed farming before? He said, Yes. I said, The Bible said, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seed. You are as guilty as the lady wearing trousers, but that's not the main one. Let's look at the next verse. This one is more serious. Thou shalt not go on next one, where he said that thou shalt not wear garments of diverse sort, as of woolen and linen together. Show me a man that the material of your trousers is the same as your shirt, if you are not wearing anything. Can you stand? The Bible says you shall not wear two different materials together. This is one material. It's different from this one. The guy stood before me. He was wearing sorry, sorry, bless you, sit down, thank you. The guy stood before me. He was wearing China shirts and was carrying khaki trousers and was telling me that women are guilty of wearing. So when I showed, he had never seen this picture before. I said, it's, thank God it's in the same chapter that you shall not wear clothes made of two different materials. Ah, he looked at himself. And I now added, I helped him to put a little fuel. And remember the Bible says, if you are guilty of one, you are guilty of one. So we are Over 400 laws were given to the Jews. They were not permitted to shave. You go to Baba, you come out of Baba, Baba shop, and we are telling women not to wear. Over 400 laws were given. Number one, you are not a Jew. That, is, that has nothing to do with salvation. I will not go in deeper than that but Acts chapter 15 when for the first time the Gentiles got born again the salvation started with Jews when Paul went for a missionary journey and Gentiles got born again some people went to meet them and told them that you must be circumcised and the apostles decided to sit down in Jerusalem to weigh the matter and they concluded by saying that let the Gentiles not keep the law we are keeping three things only three things they should do abstain from sexual immoralities abstain from idolatry and things are to do with things with the blood he said if you do those three things you are free as a gentile all of you are gentiles even jewish leaders recognize that gentile christians should not keep and some gentile christian you don't get that are you with me in jerusalem that the paul was there james was there peter was there and they all concluded that the only thing gentiles need to keep let them not commit adultery let them not up do idolatry and it's still the same thing God is telling people to them, stay away from blood they say if they do those ones they are okay they even omitted circumcision now we have pastors and churches telling people that they should keep the Jewish <laughs> people read the Some book of Deuteronomy the and read their own meanings into it look at it let me just do a little exegesis because that's 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 something people keep asking me all the time and they keep asking me on dressing dressing oh dr damina why do people wear trousers in power city ah dr damina it's because you are not understanding the bible that's why you're having problem with our dressing Deuteronomy 22 verse number five the woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So people read that, including even professors and doctors who are PhD holders in the university. And then when they read, a number of opinions are formed when words are lifted with total negligent or neglect of the surrounding text. When you neglect the surrounding text, and you cherry pick a verse out of its context you have killed the verse the life of a verse of scripture is within its context once you plot it out of its context it is lifeless it is the surroundings of that context that gives the context life so when they read a verse like that they pick it out and they form their own opinion 
and this scripture has suffered in the hands of religion in this scripture it is assumed the assumption they have is that which pertained to a woman will be a skirt that's an assumption and that which pertains to a man will be trouser that's an assumption skirt and trouser is not in that verse the verse didn't say skirt the verse didn't say trouser the verse only says that which pertained to a man and that which pertained to a woman without any specific classification but religion will pluck it out of his context and read its own opinion on it which is an abuse of the intent of the author because that verse doesn't have anything like thruzer or sketch but if we read the text without any preconceived notion or opinion we will observe that there is no sketch and no trouser was actually mentioned in that text that idea is only by men's additions it means moses's audience we are not thinking of skirt and trouser when they were given that instruction they were not thinking of that they were not thinking of that and that has become a huge issue in the body of christ there are churches where if a woman wears a trouser she will not enter their church but for example in the old testament men were wearing skirts skirt is a man's cloth maybe i should wear a skirt next sunday should we try because i will wear it wear a shirt and a tie and look like a scottish man i should do it one of these days i'm sure i'll be on front page of acquire bomb newspapers and the paper will sell the man of god that we are scared to church deuteronomy 22 30 put it up deuteronomy 22 verse number 30 a man shall not take his father's wife nor discover his father's cat his father's cat not his mother's cat because fathers we are scared are we teaching here I give you another one Ruth chapter 3 verse 9 let me arm you with weapons Ruth chapter 3 verse 9 and he said who art thou and she answered I am Ruth thine handmaid spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid for thou art a near kinsman spread she was telling a man to spread his skirt over her the man should spread his skirt over her so that means it's magsy skirt you know magsy correct long skirt not mini skirt first samuel 15 27 and as samuel turned about to go away he laid all upon the skirt of his mantle and it rent so the prophet was wearing skirt and he was about to go they held the skirt of the prophet and they tore it so men of god were skirt is anointed cloth for men of god i don't know if i'm teaching good this morning i give you another one psalm 133 verse 2 overwhelming evidence psalm 133 verse number two it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bread even aaron's bird that went down to the skirt of his garment so Aaron, a priest, was wearing skirt. In the four gospels and in the epistles, which is the New Testament, we have evidence to show that men wore gown. Gown. That one now is beyond skirt. At least skirt is from waist down. But in the New Testament, they, they updated it men were wearing gown gown in the bible let me show you a few can i give you a few matthew chapter 3 verse 4 and the same john had his raiment of camels hair and a leaden girdle about his loins a leaden girdle that's a gown and his meat was locust and wild honey so john the baptist was wearing a woman's gown long gown john the baptist the prophet the greatest prophet of the bible his clothes was a gown 
a gown. Okay? Look at Acts 21, 11. <clears throat> Acts 21, verse 11. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owned this girdle. A girdle is a gown. And shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. He was not expressly asking them that skirt is for women and trousers for men. Rather the focus 